My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. Today, out of the Gospel, we have a selection out of Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone who, to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Again, we have a selection that talks to us of our being a child of God. Repeating this again, well, Lord, maybe you're trying to tell me something, and I'll try to listen and talk to you about it today. What is it that so attracts you so to children? Is it their acceptance, their simplicity, their sincerity, their transparency? Undoubtedly, I'm sure, but they're just cute, too. From early on, they seek to know and to recognize their father and mother. Well, what about us? Lord, what about me? You are the Lord of heaven, and do I recognize you? Will I recognize you then, while I recognize my loved ones? This is a question that Peter Kreeft, the theologian and philosopher, posits about eternity. Will we recognize our loved ones in heaven? Babies, they, they seek to recognize faces, and they're, they get good at it quickly. He says, George MacDonald answers this question with a counter question. Will we be greater fools there than here? Of course we will know our loved ones. This is a divinely designed, essential part of our joy. We are not designed to be solitary mystics, lovers of God alone, but to be, like God himself, lovers of men and women as well. Just as Jesus on earth loved each person differently and specially, he did not love John as he loved Peter, because John was not Peter, so we are designed to love people specially. There is no reason why this specialness should be removed rather than added to in eternity. Our family and special friends will always be our family and special friends. In this life, a child begins to learn to love by loving mother, and then father, and then siblings, then pets. The concentric circles of love are then gradually expanded, but the beginning lessons are never abandoned. There is no reason to think God rips up this plan after death. And... Peter Kreeft offers another question. What language will we speak in heaven? He replies, My ancestors stoutly maintained that it would be Dutch, of course. <laughs> A rabbi I know has told me it will be Hebrew. Every baby, he said, still remembers the language that will be restored in heaven, the language of Eden, as evidenced by the fact that a child's first word is often Abba, father or, or daddy in Hebrew. Children love to imitate their parents. I was with a mother who said her one-year-old, who hasn't really gotten to speak much yet, was sticking some of his breakfast cereal, a big piece of breakfast cereal, in his ear and pointing to it, and she realized he was imitating her because she had the earphones in her ear. Look, he seemed to say, uh, I'm just like you. I quick really call St. Josemaria's phrase, Do not forget, anyone who does not realize he is a child of God is unaware of the deepest truth about himself. Lord, you are my Father. Let me get used to saying that with trust and love. And I go back to the Gospel that Jesus that you spoke of in the chapter 6 recorded by Matthew, where you say, 
So do not worry and say, what are we to eat, or what are we to drink, or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. Trust in you, my Father God. Which leads me to yet even another characteristic of children. They don't really worry about the future at all. What happens? Jesus, you want me to see this. When I lose my sense of my divine filiation, when I lose the understanding that I'm a child of God, I get to thinking I should be living in some other place. It would have been better if I would be living in some other time of history with some different people, some other people, some other way of doing things, of some other work I would be doing instead of putting myself into loving the very people that live with me in, in the place I'm at or doing well for God, the work that is right in front of me. Let me reflect on that prayer you gave to your disciples and to me. Give us this day our daily bread, the Our Father. In my better moments, I know I can and should concern myself with growing in virtues, taking on these features of a child of God that grows into Christ, and asking you, God, to increase the helps, the graces I need, and the opportunities to give them to me, to practice these virtues. But isn't it that sometimes I direct these petitions, these musings towards the future, Wow, it's a clever trick of the enemy to have me direct all of that toward far away, to keep me preoccupied with hypothetical moments when my practice of virtue remains contingent by focusing on what I might do in the future instead of what I really should be doing now in the moment. I'm, well, that's the devil's trick to get me off track. In the screw tape letters, the protagonist devil says, Humans live in time, but our enemy, God, <laughs> destines them to eternity. He therefore, I believe, wants them to attend chiefly to two things, to eternity itself and to that point in time which they call the present. For the present is the point at which time touches eternity. Of the present moment, and of it only, humans have an experience analogous to the experience which our enemy has of reality as a whole. Well, and this is what children do. They don't worry about the future. They, they attend to what is before them, the love that is there before them. Let me contemplate, Lord, on that teaching of St. Josemaria about the heroic minute. He said in, in his book, The Way, the heroic minute, it is the time fixed for getting up without hesitation a supernatural reflection, and up. The heroic minute. Here you have a mortification that strengthens your will and does no harm to your body. Well, why is it heroic? And why should my virtues be heroic? When the church investigates a person's life to see if she or he has lived a saintly life, the church asks two things. Did the person struggle to live the virtues in a heroic manner? And is there proof that divine favors, as it were miracles, have been granted through the person's intercession? Heroic virtues in a life. Well, a whole life is made up of years, years made up of months, months made up of days, days made up of hours and hours of minutes. And if a whole life is to be made holy, one would have to start with the minute. Which minute? Well, the heroic minute. Odie et nunc, Latin for today and now. If I want to be holy, I have to value each minute of my life, and I have to start with the present moment. Do your duty now, without looking back on yesterday, says St. Jose Maria, which is already past, or worrying about tomorrow, which may never come for you. It's in the present, well, I will see my neighbor. It's in the present, well, I do have to make some plans for the future, but it's in the present where I will finally carry out those plans. Children are in the face of those who take care of them, 
looking at them, imitated them, following them. Teresa of Avila says, The surest sign that we are keeping these two commandments, love of God and of neighbor, is, I think, that we should really be loving our neighbor, for we cannot be sure if we are loving God, although we may have good reasons for believing that we are, but we can know quite well if we are loving our neighbor. And be certain that the farther advanced you are, you, you are in this, the greater the love you will have for God. For so dearly does his majesty love us that he will reward our love for our neighbor by increasing the love which we bear to himself, and that in a thousand ways. This I cannot doubt. In this way, Lord Jesus, I will then uncomplicate myself. I will look and find you with the beautiful gaze of a child in the others. I will look to serve them, knowing, yes, yeah, simply that you receive love from all the services I give to others. Mary, my mother, help me to have this childish attitude, this good attitude of a child. Help me to see how I can be another Christ. Help me to have this simplicity, transparency, this sincerity and humble outlook. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help for putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.